Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Reckoning of Roku chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 50, which is called Come Back for the Body. Once again, YouTube channel membership is enabled on this channel if you want to help support and subscribing also helps. But we have a Gyatso point of view chapter here and um, where we get some very interesting things such as the return of Sister Disha and them saving, of course, uh, Roku and Sozin. Um, but also a pretty interesting conversation that Gyatso kind of overhears between Dalasai and Kozuru right at the start. So let's get into this one here. So yeah, we, we jump straight in with the idea. Gyatso is worried on the outside. All this stuff is happening. He can't go in. Um, he's worried about um, Malaya, of course. But um, then he listens to Sozin and, um, you know, his companions basically talking about Sozin. So um, we get Kozu and Dalasai talking here. And interestingly, this is like the first time the two of them, I think, just have a proper scene of just the two of them talking together away from Sozin. So they can actually talk about him openly. And so Kozu, of course, wants to go help. Dalasai is kind of worried that, you know, should we go in? Should we not? Um, you know, we're, we're, we're just addressing this whole idea of they don't want to get on his bad side because ultimately they both get the sense that there is a brutality, a cruelty there. He will do whatever he needs to do um, to get what he wants. And they worry about like how much is he trying to keep us silent and kind of protect himself from knowledge of what he's done getting out. All this sort of stuff. Um, Kozu is worried about like the payment um, and Dalasai points out you can't collect your payment if you walk in there and you never come out so like we could get hurt if we go in there if we're not prepared for this that's another thing Kozu says Sozin said if something ever happened to me he'd send uh, the payment to my family you believed that um, and so there's a a bit of an interesting one in terms of how Dalasai views Sozin of course and um, Dalasai's like we'll wait another hour if there's no sign of him we'll head back and there's a worry here of like, you want to strand him here? He'd do the same to us. And this is where we address the whole idea of like, well, what if he's fine, realizes we left, makes his way back to the Fire Nation, we're going to be in prison for the rest of our lives. Um, but the argument here is Sozin wouldn't tell anyone what happened. Remember that he wants to keep all of this a secret, especially from the Fire Lord. Um, so we're, we'd be safe just in kind of that regards, ultimately. Um, but Kozu is like, if he really wanted our silence, I don't think he'd reward us with a bonus. Um, I think he'd cut our throats. You believe he'd do something like that? And Kozuru, interestingly, says, I was raised by thieves and bandits and mercenaries. When it comes down to it, there are very few people who are willing to do absolutely anything to get their way. Sozin is one of them. That might make him a good Fire Lord, or maybe the worst kind. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see how exactly that turns out. At this point, Gyatso looks up to the sky and sees uh, Lola arriving back. He's very happy about this, quickly followed by Amra, highlighting that Sister Disha is also here. So he goes up, flies up to them to meet them. Um, happy to see the Sky Bison again. We address the whole idea. Your airbending is back. But then the question comes up of like, wait, how did this happen? Uh, how did you arrive back here? And Disha just points out that Lola showed up without the two of you. We knew something was wrong. We followed you back here as soon as possible. Lola guided us, basically. So Lola kind of being the uh, the MVP here <laughs> towards the end. And interestingly, like Roku kind of suspected she might do that. So interesting detail. Idraz, of course, where is Roku? He's, he's underground. They hear the, the muffled booms, the, the attack happening here, because on this side of the story, we're a little bit behind what we've already seen, but we're going to quickly catch up here because they look to where the booms are coming from, and then, boom, it, it, the top of the cave bursts open, the iridescent flames, Roku's big attack, flies out the top. They know where they need to head to, ultimately. And there's a big question of like, whoa, he was down there. And Gyatso starts to mention Malaya again, of course, because he's very worried about her. So they start to clear out the rubble when they get there. This is where they realize, oh, this kind of floating rock here. And they look down and it's Roku doing his earthbending that we saw again from the previous chapter. So he's trying to slowly get the rocks out. 
he uses the last bit of his strength to push them over the edge and then he collapses. So Roku's unconscious now along with Sozin. So they get down there, they save Roku and Sozin. Uh, they see the body of Ulo down here as well. So um, yeah, his unblinking icy blue eyes stared upward and the center of his torso was its own pit scorched black. So no other bodies, they don't find Malaya here they're going to look for her later because they can't spend the time right now to look for her. That's what Disha says. Like, we have to get Avatar Roku and Prince Sozin to the healers as soon as possible. Uh, that's what we need to do. Yatsu wants to stay back, but she has to tell him that this is the only way that they're going to survive. So he unfortunately has to um, leave with Disha here, but looks back and is just very worried. Um... His breathing had become shallow and jagged and his eyes welled with tears as his attention lingered on the sun-drenched pit receding into the distance, still searching for the girl with the sharp knife, telling himself that above all else, she was a survivor. Now, of course, we know Malaya has been killed. We assume they will find her body, but that won't reveal the truth. They'll probably just all assume it in the cave collapses and all this sort of stuff, that's what happened. And basically, unless Sozin tells the truth, they're never going to know what actually happened to Malaya. But it's going to be a real devastating blow to Gyatso to lose Malaya as well in all of this. So that's the really unfortunate part here. But of course, Roku and Sozin are going to make it out of this, of course. Uh, that's the kind of key part of the chapter. Ulo, 100% confirmed dead, obviously. But then... I do like the Dalasai and Kozuru back and forth, just highlighting that even though they're his teammates, they, like a lot of the other characters, also view it as there is something about Sozin where they just get the sense that he would do absolutely anything to get his own way and, you know, keep his secrets, that sort of thing. And so the two of them basically just play it safe here and are like, what what will put give, give, put us in the best position to come across in the best way to Sozin so we get in the least trouble with him and so they just decide to hang out follow his orders like you told us to stay here we did exactly that you can't blame us for that and that's kind of just the approach that they're taking here because again he doesn't treat them as friends he doesn't trust them in the in one of his last chapters we got the idea that he already basically has plans in place to kill Dalasai if she kind of steps out of line too too far because he views her as being a threatening intelligent woman and so that could be a, a danger to him and um, so that, that's an, an interesting dynamic here. And then obviously, I guess, because Kozuru is maybe not the most intelligent character, he just doesn't view her as being a threat overall. So um, a couple of interesting dynamics here. Um, the emotion of just the worry from Gyatso being one of the main things. But I like that Sister Disha is here and she just gets to see how crazy the events are that have happened here. But of course, we are waiting to see the discussion between Disha and Roku. That's what we're building towards here. Um, but yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this chapter. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.